This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, just head on over to squarespace.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. This episode is also brought to you by Shutterstock.com with over 20 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go over to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER7. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unicorn Duck Shadow Puppet, episode number nine for July 22nd, 2013. You're watching Game Breaker. I am Getty Gannon, and coming up on today's show, Wild Cell's final two races have been announced for the 10th time. We've got a look, a new look at the UI and hints of the final two classes. All that and more, I'm going to be speaking in this voice the entire episode. Editor in chief at Zam.com, otherwise known as Jadamal. Mr. Scott Hawks. Hello, how are you? I was speaking in strange voices today. Is it just strange voice day today? Or are we all just going a bit mental? And joining us, as always. Mr. Farhan Siddiqui. Hello. I'm, Hi. Unfortunately, I'm not much of a voice actor. That's totally no. okay, because <laughs> I'm totally creeped out. My work is done. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hope you guys had a great week. Thanks for the chat room for showing up on another uh, off-time show. Um, I think we may be moving the time of this show permanently. Uh, nice. Yes, we are. Jaramore says, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so we're moving it to 3. Uh, 3 PST on Mondays. So just check. Your, we got to get a schedule fixed up. But uh, that will be permanent. So show is moving to 3 PST permanently. Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Hopefully that doesn't conflict with you, your schedule. Because I do have to take in every, every single viewer's schedule into consideration. Apparently, because that's that's what mm -hmm. I get tweeted constantly. <laughs> this is a terrible time. Well, sorry. Sorry, I feel I feel terrible about <clears throat> that. Do you really? All right, what is this first step? For you? What do I got here? I got some tweets. What is this from David Bass? Do you know? Well, I don't even know why these what? are in my notes. I don't know what these are. What? What tweet? What? Hmm? I don't know. David Bass says, Dear guy who signed up for the beta 500 times in a row, don't call us, we'll call you. Impressive. That is impressive. 500 times, huh? What is this one here? Oh, there's another one. Wait, sorry, make that 4,000 applications from that person. Wow. <laughs> Somebody's got some problems. They're probably watching this show. I should probably be nice to them. Because they I may be a serial really killer. They might be a serial <laughs> you killer. really should be very nice. And I think that person who replied 4,000 times showed a lot of gumption and persistence and is very brave. Yeah. What he said. 4,000? Quite a lot. That is that is a lot. If you did those manually, holy shit, bro. If you wrote a bot somehow that did it, right? That, I that don't know. Still... I'm I'm scared, confused, like, and well, I never I never thought about the lengths that people will go through to possibly get into beta. That is the that is the, probably the most excessive I've ever heard. That Four is... thousand applications to try and up the chances of getting it. If someone was going to write a bot, though, like. You think that that person would be smart enough to realize that that probably would get noticed that many applications from one person. I I yeah I don't I don't know what to say. 
I don't know. I what think you're best moving on and doing it like quickly, quietly, yet politely. All right. Uh, before we get into it, got a nice little piece of fan art. I will call it fan art. He's a fan. Yes. He's definitely a he's fan. He's a fan who of, also happens to be he's a, fan of, he's a fan who happens to work for <laughs> Carbine on Wildstar. But uh, yes, Mr. Chris Hannell over uh, who does the Daily Blink as well. He also works for Carbine on Wildstar. He had this. Uh, he dropped this on the old Facebook. A little Firefly inspired Wildstar fan art. Awesome, awesome work. I think this. A lot of people enjoyed this. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. Not nearly as creepy as the guy with 4,000 applications, but... We're placating him. We're placating him. All right, let's talk about some Wildstar. So, Wildstar's final two races have finally been revealed. They were announced at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. That's right, at San Diego Comic-Con, not two days previously on their official site. That never happened. You saw it coming. No, no, that never happened. No, no that didn't. These screenshots were not found by Reddit on WildStarOnline.com before they were officially announced. It, it did not happen. For real. And, yeah, and as Mike Donatelli said when we were talking to him, and I definitely did not kind of casually mention it in passing a while ago, no, uh, no, 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 none of this, none of that, none of that happened. <laughs> none of, no, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. That's All right, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Carbine are really, really good at announcing stuff, aren't they? They're just, they're, they're like masters of their craft. I'm now starting to wonder if it's all by design and they just get a kick out of it. Um, I don't know, at least they didn't put out the, the video early, though. That's something, I guess. It's right on time. What do you think of the artwork? What do you think of the what do you think of the uh, the new races here? I really like the Mortis one. I think that one looks really awesome, and it actually because I, I was looking through the screenshots on the the, the Mortis page, and I didn't really see a, a female a Mortis on there. But like, if they look like this, then it's it's pretty cool. Like, I especially like how you can see the bones through like the the serum stuff. Like, it's just like a nice, very it's like a very clean zombie. Like, if that makes any sense. So, it's a very sci-fi really like zombie. Yes. It's a very mm -hmm. glowing rib cages and weird things and <laughs> assets. <laughs> uh, what about the uh, the old Chua? Mixed reactions on the Chua. I kind of like them. I like them. I think that they're, they're like they're, think of a cross between Gremlins and the Tasmanian Devil. It's basically how I say craziness about. I like it. I, I hear some people saying, "Oh, they're going to be like the goblins of of the game." I don't. I don't think so. They just because they're small, like they're kind of much more. I think they're more badass. Like they're freaking like little evil. Yes, yeah, they, they, they just don't really care about anything. anything. They look like no, douchebags. Like they look like completely like I'm like like a like a British soccer hooligan who's just going to like <laughs> punch your right. Come on. No, no, but I think I think that like a football hooligan, and yes, it's a football hooligan. Not a football soccer hooligan, hooligan, soccer so footy. Never, never it's a football hooligan. It's a footy. Um, you go play some footy. Yeah, that guy when you kick the ball with your foot. Um, yeah. So uh, what I would say is that they're going to be much more devious about it than you are, whereas someone of a different persuasion would just break a bottle or something. Uh, but they're going to make things explode when you're at least expecting it, and um, you know, that they're mischievous and incredibly psychotic and dangerous and twisted with it, which sounds like a lot of fun to me. If you want to, awesome you sausage want to says old time. Side, awesome sausage says old time Viking mixed with a squirrel. Okay, sure. What okay, I want to know is what 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 is that weapon he is holding, and why is there a skull looking at you down the barrel of the gun? <laughs> it's just to let you know. What's about to happen? Can death is death is knocking it's on your door. You're staring it's death imminent. in the face. Yeah, oh. it's like we're not going to oh, kill so. you. Just do that. We're going to show you. I'm about to kill you at the same time. So if it's a spell splinter, right? He's, he's shooting magic through his gun, and so it's like evil death, crazy magic shooting out of his gun. 
And so, yes, you should be afraid. He's got this look in his eye, like he's gonna be twitchy, just be like fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. He's just gonna be like have Tourette's, he's just gonna yell and like say weird shit, right? Look at him. Like he's just gonna like freak he's, out. They are like they, they are like like mental. Like that, that's that's the overall thing with them. They're they're brilliant. Like they're like naturally brilliant. True it equals it's Joe Pesci. Not with an irrational mind. Like it's not. It's 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 mad. The 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 character that was um, the character that was uh, most uh, linked to it, and it was was it. I think it was Mike Donatelli said the the Joker is the character that most reminds them of one of the lead characters of the Chua mm. because the Joker's like <laughs> unpredictable. He's a genius. Right. Or you, you can't expect. You don't know what he's going to do. He's completely irrational. Completely irrational and absolute, broken. Yeah, fly exactly. off the handle at any moment and just do something mm -hmm. absolutely insane, but incredibly and yeah. smart. Mm -hmm. And now, Man, now I, I might roll a Chua. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think I would, and I usually don't go for these. Like I usually go for like humans and stuff, but God damn, he looks cool. I don't know. I like him. Yeah. I do uh, cool. we, can't, we can't play the video uh, because of no. YouTube. Boo, YouTube. We can't take the chance. We, put, we, we we roll videos in the inside of our new shows like this, and YouTube flags them and says we have like copyright infringements, and they say bad, and I say f you. How dare um, you? How dare so we you just, put something on this site that's been given public permission to be used anyway? So we just stopped. So we stopped. Um, I don't know. So we got the, we've got what's up. Yeah, do watch it though. Like, if anyone hasn't actually somehow not seen that video, it's brilliantly well done. Yeah, you should definitely watch it's it. Great stuff. Yeah, um, it's great. So we've got the Chua for the Dominion, like we were expecting uh, when they totally didn't announce it a couple show agos. So <laughs> again, good at announcing stuff. Uh, but what did we learn about the Chua then? What 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 do we know now that we didn't know before? Well, the the background basically, the Chua um, lived in um, this verdant, lush, beautiful place. And the Makari are scouting around trying to find people to add to their um, to, to the Dominion. And they think that these these crazy little things have got potential. So they give them some introductory sort of Dominion technology. And then within less than a century, basically their planet's turned into this big scab, is the word that's used, of an industrial wasteland that they basically turned into these technological freaks who have used up the planet. And they didn't really give a toss about the Macari. Like, it's not like they went to Macari, oh, thank you. It's like, yeah, whatever, this is great. Let's go blow things up with this. Ah. And then um, when they run out of stuff, they go, oh, all right, then we, we need your resources. So we'll make you loads of things that go boom. So basically, they're the driving force for weaponry for the, for the Dominion. So they've actually got a lot of power. They're not these just these little rancy things that run around being silly like they're really important to the dominion and are a prime driving force to why the dominion is so so strong the, the funny th thing about the two is that they're uh sort of like really looked down upon especially by the cassians within the dominion like they've said that like the different races have different uh viewpoints like the dragon don't really mind them as long as they don't get in their way because they're making them cool weapons to kill stuff with but especially the cassians they sort of like like sort of deride them they're like we, we i know we need them but yeah, which is sort of why, like, in the original reveal video, they showed that, like, you know, eh, let's just not talk about these guys for right now kind of thing, because, you know, Malvolio, he really doesn't care for the Chua very much. And it's really quite cool that, you know, they have this dynamic where, um, you know, there's there's sort of, like, the outcast race within the Dominion, but still, like, really, really, really incredibly important. Um and I think that's a dynamic that I haven't really seen too much in in, in other um, settings, where where you have like someone that's sort of outcast, but they still have way more power than you'd actually expect them to, just despite that. I love the uh, the description here too. Nearly as brilliant as they are sociopathic. <laughs> <laughs> the Chua are mischievous inventors who develop advanced weapons and technology for the Dominion. Science has never been more fun or agonizing. Oh, it's awesome. It's really funny. Are you guys a fan? You guys, you guys like, I know some people are kind of, you know, some people just can't, don't like the short races. I think our producer is very much, ah, I can't, I, he doesn't like them. I, I, I like them. I think they're great. 
I don't I don't really care about like height or whatever. It's whether they're interesting and they've got a personality to them and they've got a very distinct and obvious personality that looks like it's just there to be fun and that you can really run with. So cool. Yeah. Okay. So we spend very little time on the Mordesh. What do we know about the Mordesh? Ah, let's Lots. actually let's yeah, actually let's this, this was interesting. So Reddit found um Reddit found a year old post from Jeremy Gaffney who said that <laughs> at the time that at least one unannounced race is going is genderless. Um is it the Chua? Are they genderless? Probably. I mean, there, there's like heavy implications that they could be genderless, or they, they might just be a single gender. I know that there's been a lot of like fan theories that have been going around, which are actually really fun to read. Or like, there's like some people who think that it maybe it's like you know in their mad dash to destroy uh, to like use all the new Dominion tech and basically destroy their planet. They sort of made themselves infertile by like you know with like radioactive waste or something like that. And so they are just cloning themselves now. From so they're all just maybe like a single gender of clones at this point. Or maybe it's something like where the Makari, you know, need something to, to hold over them because they're so crazy and insane and out of control. So they're, like, sort of taken away the female ones and sort of, like, are holding them hostage or something. So, yeah. Just don't you find out if you throw a bucket of water over them. <laughs> oh, that's how you find out. That's how you tell. You just douse yep. water with them. So, um, so but it does, it, it's one of the rules. From some of the screenshots, it does look like players are going to be actually make to make somewhat more feminine looking Chua though. So, I guess it's less that they're genderless and more that you can't actually tell by looking. Presumably, I don't, I don't know. Throw water on them. Well, I mean, I mean, the the, the point of contention is that when they they asked, um, I think Pappy, I don't know, what's his full name? Sorry, Chad Moore. Chad, Chad Moore. Um, when they asked him about. Uh, whether or not the two are, are uh, a single gender or multiple, or two genders, then he said that it was a closely guarded Dominion secret or something like that. That's why it's a little bit like, oh, what what exactly does that mean? It's a secret. So it's obviously, but yeah, a they secret. do have the they do have the customization options. Like you, in one of the screenshots, they have like a pink Tua. So what about um what about on the PvP side? I mean, PvP players a lot of the times uh, like to take the smallest. Um, character just kind of be, I guess, less seen. Um, their hitboxes are going to be the same as everyone else's. Uh, in Wildstar, I think that's already been known that they're not going to change that. Um, how do how do you think that could that feel possibly slightly weird in combat, like in an action game, like your character's really small, but you've got the same hit si hit hitbox size as you know some of these other, like a human or something. It oh. could do because of the aiming nature of of the game. Like in other games, it doesn't. If you just tap target, it, it doesn't really matter because you're centered all the time anyway. But if you're, if you're say missing the chewer by a, a very slight amount, but still actually hitting them because the hitbox is a little wider, that might feel a little weird, I guess. But the chewer aren't like minuscule. They're not so small that you're not going to be able to see them. Kind of size that talked about that. They said that they've actually adjusted their their height a couple of times to make sure that. For PvP, for PvP especially, that they weren't so small it gave you a PvP advantage. They're smaller, yes, and they're the smallest of the races, but they're not like little specks or anything that are certainly noticeable. So, um, we actually just got in, in chat, uh, CRB Aether, the community director, saying that they are genderless. So. Oh, that you are genderless? That's, that's confirmed? Okay, good. Good to know. Good to know. Um, uh, final race... For the Exiles, the Mordesh. First of all, what do you guys think of the Mordesh? A lot of people, like, you know, our producer, loving, loving, hating the Chua, loving the Mordesh. You can tell where he's at. But he loves the yeah. old evil zombie chick boobs and rib cage look. I don't know. What do you guys what, think? What I like They're pretty badass. What I like well, they are badass. What I like about them most is the, is the fact that basically they're, they're a fall from grace story. The, 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 this incredibly beautiful, intelligent, dynamic race that was evolving beyond everybody's, like, you know, they, they were they were one of the leaders of the galaxy. The Dominion came a-calling because they're like, well, obviously, you know, you're, you're marvelous, you're going to come with us. And then because they were so wonderful and so full of themselves, <laughs> a guy called Lazarin makes an eternal life elixir, because they're such alchemists, 
the, the kind of car doesn't quite go very well. And in fact, starts to rot them and turn them into crazed cannibals. Um, all that blue stuff you see on them, uh, people, I think some people, that's actually the serum that stops them from turning into crazed cannibals again. So all of that on their armor, when you see anything, the blue, uh, the blue liquidy uh, part of their armor, that's the, that's what's stopping them from turning, uh, from eating everybody around them. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I like them. They're very so space zombies with blue liquid coming at you. Mm -hmm. I guess that's that's my, that's my tweet. On the more dash. <laughs> it says, uh, cursed with a degenerative disease after delving into the forbidden secrets of alchemy, the Mordesh have come to Nexus to find a cure. Uh, being a space zombie can be complicated, unleashing dark and deadly disciples, uh, disciplines on the Dominion much simpler. So it definitely sounds like the evildoers definitely going to do bad things. And that. Yeah, they're the, they're gonna get their hands dirty. They they form this thing called the Black Hoods, which is this um, intelligence organization. Uh, basically, they've been hunted for a long time. The 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 Dominion's um, response to the contagion that it's called that nearly wiped them out was to blockade their entire planet and wait for them all to die up, which upset them slightly. The Mordesh don't know why. And the exiles smuggled them out, and in part of all this, they formed this intelligence organization to keep themselves alive and to to do dirty work, basically. And they're going to be the exact sort of, like, secret battle between them and the, the Makari and the ICI. The Makari's own sort of spy division. So you're going to have, like, spy versus spy wars going on between um, the Mordesh and the Makari, as well as all the rest of it that's going on between the Exiles. So there's a lot of, like, cool little things going on. There, it's not just straight-up space zombies. There, there, there's, like, society, and there's the whole idea that they can't have kids. Like all of the Mordesh are survivors of the contagion from eighty years before the game started. So they're all the ones who scrambled off that planet. All of them have got those sort of like scars of what happened physically and mm. mentally. And they can't procreate. So that means that all of the characters have got that background if you really want to get role played with them. And also they're all bearing those grudges against the Dominion. They so can't procreate there's, there's until you go cool to stories, until you go to the character creation and just Character yes. Just yeah, it's, just, it's another one. The idea is it's another one that the exiles have smuggled out, basically. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess I should say the evil character, maybe the misunderstood. Well, uh, I, I mean, they, they certainly do want revenge. Like they, they mm. want revenge on the Dominion for quarantine. Well, them, they were screwed like, over by the Dominion. That that, yeah. yeah, they were absolutely screwed over, and they're, it was like they're not. They're not just like they're not good guys. Like. The reason they're in that trouble is basically they thought they could do everything. And now they're pissed because when it all fell down upon them, the Dominion let them to it. And as you said, screwed them over. So they're not going to be pleasant, nice guys playing by the rules in Wildstar. They're going to be bastards when they, when they need bastards. to be. Absolutely. Bastards. Bastards, yeah. Has, um, so have, have these two races changed your faction choice at all? I've heard a lot of people wishing uh, the Mordesh were uh, were the Dominion and vice versa. So I think it definitely it definitely got it has a lot of people thinking now. I, I think I, so. I need to see if the Mordesh like please, the Mordesh are able to play one of the new uh, classes. So if it happens to be the one that I wasn't interested in, then it's gonna make my decision a lot easier because I'm I like, think, okay, now I think I think we can take a pretty educated guess of which one that is. Yeah, really. But... See, they're, see, they alchemists. Like, what? We, we, there's going to be a full healing class, and you would think that that was going to be the Mordesh one. You would think. I mean, of course, we don't know, but you would think that the Mordesh one, because they're alchemists, that would lean towards their idea. And when, when um, Mike Donatelli and uh, and Chad were talking about it, saying that the alchem, the sort of scientific bent, lent towards the classes. So, if you think alchemy for the Mordesh. That makes sense, perhaps, towards the medic kind of class. This is uh, looking at the new Wildstar, well, not new, but updated Wildstar's faction page. So they've done a really good job of uh, of giving yeah. both factions, humans and cute races and badass races, haven't they? Like, if you look at it on like from this perspective, it's a really nice mix. I think everyone should kind of have 
a pretty good option of what kind of character you're going for, human badass or cute. There's, there's guess... a nice, there's a variety, you can see there's sort of like a variety of type, archetypal MMO characters there, but within them and the way they're sort of paired up, there's a lot of counters, both in lore and, and just like identity between the, between the races, so you've got a lot of enmity and a lot of cross with just a whole faction as it, as it is, but also within individual races that really works. So you can see races there that are obviously just going to piss each other off, like immediately. And for their own reasons, other than just being Dominion or Exile. All right, I want to move on and talk about this awesome. We got a we got a screenshot coming up here to to from Gamespot. Uh, we're gonna look at look at some UI stuff, but first, I gotta tell you guys about Shutterstock. We had a great deal going on with Shutterstock right now. I'm so glad to have these guys on as sponsors. I want to save you guys thirty percent off on your Shutterstock account. All you got to do is go over, make a new account, use promo code GameBreaker Seven. Use that promo code. I'm going to save you 30% off on your Shutterstock account. So what is Shutterstock? A lot of people maybe not have checked it out. Well, if you need stock footage, photography, icons, vector artwork, uh, anything for some sort of like creative project, video project, uh, website, we've been using it constantly. Uh, perfect time for a, bring this up. We've been working on a brand new website called Cube Nation. It's at cubenation.tv. You should go check it out if you have seen the uh, the new the new craze of Cube World, the new game. It's in alpha, but everybody's going nuts. But we've got a whole site dedicated to it. But we've been using Shutterstock constantly on this new site for all these little buttons. Like it's kind of hard to see maybe on here and stuff, but you can see like this little icon up here, right? Like this little microphone we needed, all these little details and stuff. We needed all all this stuff from Shutterstock. All these little icons, widget things. Uh, if you come down here, um, where is it here? All of these icons, we needed like globes and clothing and this, that, the other thing. All of these little things, all these little vector artwork and buttons and icons and all that kind of stuff. Get it at Shutterstock. That's what you do. You go over to Shutterstock. If you need artwork, maybe you got a YouTube page. You want to like, you know, spruce up the banner. Maybe you need like a caricature. Just come on over and search for, let's see, let's do, let's not do 8-bit. We did 8-bit already. Let's look at, um... I don't know. Let's cartoon characters. Let's see cartoon. Let's see cartoon vector because I like vectors because vector images uh, are Adobe Illustrator files usually that you can resize to any size and they don't uh, lose their quality. So, um, yeah, like maybe you've got maybe you need a maybe you need a a parrot pirate or maybe you need another one. But seriously, all the, all the, I mean, the artwork is awesome. I mean, like done by professional artists uh, or just really good artists doesn't really mean they're, they're professional or not. Um, they upload their stuff and you download it and they grant you a license. You can use all this artwork for your YouTube page, your website, whatever you got to do. Uh, maybe you have a guild website and you want to spruce that up. You can find some really, it doesn't all have to be cute and cartoony stuff. You just search anything, go in there and search like, you know, castles, wolves, whatever, knights in shining armor, all kinds of great stuff up there. You know, whether you got a site that you want to make it look badass or make it look like, you know, cartoony and Minecraft-ish and you want to go 8-bit, whatever you want, just go up there and do a search. I'm sure you're going to find stuff. We use it every day here at Game Breaker TV. Uh, make a new account, go sign up, and make sure you got to use the promo code GAMEBREAKER7. Got to use that code. Save yourself 30% off on your account, which is a lot, which is a lot. I don't know how long um, this 30% off deal is going to go with Shutterstock because I think it's the most they've ever given anyone off. Ever. So check it out. Shutterstock.com. Gamebreaker7 for the promo code. So um, GameSpot. GameSpot.com. You know that other website. Uh, they have a gameplay video up on their website. Are you laughing? Because I'm telling people what GameSpot is. No. Uh -oh. It's one of several other websites. Uh, but I just, you, you know, have... I don't know, man. I mean, I game... Gamebreaker TV is like the place to go, so I don't I don't know if our users really know what these other sites are. It's, it's well, there's Amazon.com as well. Thank you very much. You don't have this. No, I don't. I have other stuff instead. You don't have this, have and this is the story. Oh, is it okay? Let's see if there's any stories that have got Zam involved in this show, shall we? All right, please go ahead. No, maybe there's not. I don't know. Let's see. Check it out, though. So we've got there's a gameplay video up on GameSpot um, alongside of a developer. 
Um, it's definitely worth checking out the video. Go check it out. There's there's a lot of combat and there's housing. Uh, plus, there's a look at the Mordesh and the Chua. Um, but we want. I grabbed a screenshot here because I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, again, courtesy of uh, GameSpot.com. So a couple of things we can talk about here, though. First, by looking at this screenshot. Um, first of all, the action bar. I don't know if you can see on there, but action bar is like getting cut off. Yeah, it's getting cut off. Let me let me try and fix that here. Hang on. Uh, hang on. Uh, oh, there it is. I can't get the whole. Let me let me, let me resize so you can get the whole thing since it's kind of important. It's kind of important to the conversation, you know. Uh, let's see. Does that work? All right, there we go. Now you can pretty much see everything. Almost. Um, ten slots. Ten slots on the action bar. That is ten slots. Uh, what was the last number we heard? Eight, right? Yes. Eight is definitely less than ten, correct? Yes, that oh, is good. two less. Good. Okay, so that is confirmed. Uh, and kind of interesting. Did they? Did they, does anybody know if they commented on this? Of of if this is definitely going? Or obviously, it's beta, so it could always change. But anybody see any comments floating around the web of why the increase to ten? We don't know that much of the details about exactly how the, the action bar works in terms of uh, limited action set abilities versus other things. So um, it's possible that some of those slots might be for something like a, like a consumable or for uh, like a path ability or, or, or something else that might uh, fall out of the, the normal set. But um, it, it also, I mean, you have to keep in mind that this is like including the, uh, the new races, obviously, because they're playing as a Chua. Mm -hmm. And so it, it might just be like a newer patch, and they might have ended up feeling like, okay, no, we needed to to bump it up or something. So. Well, so the first the first button there that you can see has got an X on it, so it looks like that's a different ability to the rest for some reason. So this is a very good point. A very good point. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull the bug down. I'm gonna resize. Keep... What? I, I... I, got, I want to point out something else. I'm gonna re, I want to resize this so you guys get the entire image of, of exactly what this UI looks like that I can see. Hang on one sec. I want to. I want to this is really important because is that everything? Yeah, that's pretty much everything right there. Because one thing that stood out. So one thing that stood out, and I want to know what you guys think about the UI in general. Because I gotta say, when I saw this, it feels really big. There's a lot of UI. <laughs> it covers. It's got. It takes up. In that, I mean. We don't know how that's set. We don't know, you know, if if that's just whoever that person has that set on has it that way at that time. You know, it might be, you can change it a bit. I'm sure you can. <clears throat> but yeah, it takes up quite a bit of real estate on your screen. I, I do say, hope I you mean, can resize it. I do hope that there's an option. Like I said, we do not. This is this is from the game sort of video, so we don't have any control of that. We don't know the resolutions, things like that. Monitors, nothing. We don't and nothing. But. Just wanted to say, like, I don't know, I, I I do hope that there's some sort of resize mechanism because, I mean, look at that quest track. I mean, that looks like it's a lot of space in particular, doesn't it? Over on the right hand side, bottom there. Well, that's yeah. and I mean, having played it like at E3, the the quest track that's for your um, if I remember, that's for the uh, path mm -hmm. stuff, and then you have just the quest for the area above it, so. I remember, like, there was low, like, you'd walk in, there'd be loads of quests just all over the place, I remember, when we when played it at E3. Um, the chat room's talking about the hub, I was saying, yeah, they're like, the, 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 the X is the innate uh, that you get for your, your racial, we've talked about as well, what the others are, but yeah, the, you, you're going to be able to modify this extensively. The, there's no doubt about that, that, that that's something that's going to happen. And of course, we know that like, you know the official. Well, not the, I won't say the official statement because I don't know if it's called that. But this, but what we've heard out of the Carbine team is you know obviously they're they're really uh, pushing for the the whole add-ons and mods for that community to kind of do their thing. So obviously we'll see things uh, modded out and so. And, but just just kind of overall, kind of as as a default UI though, first impression, I'm a little bit worried about the space and the size. Um, but again, who knows what. This person actually did in their settings. We have no idea. So let's just. I mean, would it would it on first glance, if if this was a default size, would you be a little bit worried if that much real estate was taken up on your UI? 
I mean, personally, I prefer minimalistic UIs, so something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more contained, so you can see the the game world a little bit better. Especially, I think something like Wellstar, where you you want to be able to see the telegraphs and everything else that's going on, that would be uh, pretty important. But um, on the other hand, like I'm thinking back to like my early MMO days, like when I first like uh, like uh, back when uh, WoW first came out. WoW was the first add-on compatible uh, uh, MMO that I played. And I remember, like, installing Cosmos and, like, having things everywhere. And I, I feel like beginning MMO players, like, they, they want to have all, as much information as they can. And so it, maybe it's, it's okay for it to be a little bit, um, you know, everywhere. And then the, the MMO players who prefer minimalistic things, they're, they're going to definitely get their add-ons that are going to pare that down a little bit. But giving the information to, to players to begin with is, is a, thing, a fine thing. I don't think that's a problem. And also, if you if you look at the sort of overall style of the game, it's it's sci-fi, but it's industrial sci-fi. So it's not like you know, fine lines and lasers around everything. Everything's quite chunky and industrial in the, in a lot of the design of the game. So it understands why the UI reflects that a little, like in, in that sense. But I'm sure you can you can change the scale. I mean, it's more it's more it takes up more um, of the real estate of the screen that I usually like. Um, but I'm sure you'll be able to change that. Uh, moving away, moving away from the uh, the UI for a second. If you watch the video, which again you should go watch it, um, there was a strong hint at fishing in the video. Did we know about that before fishing? I mean, I, every MMO has got to have fishing. I kind of assume, but did we know about that? It was a little bit controversial, actually, because uh, I say controversial, but it was, uh, uncertain because uh, they they said that they had fishing in it to begin with, and then it wasn't really that fun or or interesting, so they just like pulled it out until, and they were like, "Well, we'll put this back in if we can think of a way to wild star it, you know, like like make it interesting and fun and exciting." And so, um, what uh, the developer mentioned is that he said that they they have um, a number of hobbies that you can do in the game for, for more uh, casual players to sort of relax in, and one of them was uh, was fishing. So that, that's interesting. The, like, look, I haven't heard of hobbies before, so that, that's interesting to me. And the other the other big, I think, takeaway out of this video for me was we got a, we got a line, and I'll quote it, since we're so close to launch, close quote, that was the line from Carbine. So... We are expecting a 2013 anyway, but there's always a chance that uh, MMOs can slip. But I don't know, maybe a hint towards everything's being on schedule, and we're actually getting really close. Do not know. That would be yeah. nice. But that say if we would... got if we got like a launch window, but say games come up packs. That'd be nice. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. All right, moving on. Carbine hosted a uh, conference call oh, this could, week. Could, What's that? Can I just mention one thing from the the GameStop video? Um, it, it's it was actually like pretty cool that like uh, if you watch it, then um, like there was a chua stuff towards the beginning, and they they continued to talk about the races and, and other new things that are coming up. But uh, towards the latter half, they they switched over to an exile human esper, and they they were playing mm -hmm. with that. And one of the things that I found like really cool because like we've seen a number of esper footage through different conventions and and, and other things. But um, what, what I found really interesting about this one was that y you sort of see um whoever was playing it uh, was uh, like, like they sort of leveled themselves down to like level 7 they're fighting like level 5 and 6 mobs but the esper abilities that they were using were actually like surprisingly like at least at least to me like I sort of had the my in my mind like esper as a long range class mm -hmm. and this esper was like using all, like, like the, the ability that they used the most was uh, almost like a melee range ability so, so I found that really interesting that it, it sort of implies that the esper at, at the very least has options in their limited action set to sort of choose what range they want to attack at. So I don't know if this is something where it's like maybe longer range abilities that are going to do less damage or, or, or what it is, but at the very least, Esper's I, I think that was really cool that you could see that you could sort of choose what range you want to act at. I so. wish we could show that video and display it, but we can't! YouTube. Go over to GameSpot.com watch it. Alright, so next, uh, Carbine hosted a conference call this week. Uh, Game Breaker was there. Some other site called Maz or something might have been there as well. And um, yes. we got a big hint at the uh, final two classes when Mike Donatelli uh, said that both of the new races uh, he said that there were uh, scientists fit the final two classes as well thematically. Um, so straight away, uh, what do you guys say? Uh, I'm going to say uh, engineer and alchemist come to mind. What do you guys reckon? Is that a pretty good? Yep. 
or uh, variances on those names, but yes. Variances those on those names, but that's probably what we're used to. Um, mm-hmm. There was a little confusion about over how many classes the Mordesh would, would have access to, right, Scott? Yeah, there was. It was, um, a, it was a bit of a confusion. Basically, I, uh, on Wildstar Central, um, I, I, someone basically called me out and said, Zam said that the Mordesh can only have one of the new, the, the unreleased, unnamed um, classes. And all these other websites said that they can have two. And so I was like, oh, no, I've messed up or something. So I checked. And I went through it. And uh, I hadn't. I'd actually got it right. And uh, it is the Mordesh can only have one of the new ones. They can be, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this wrong now, though. Warrior, uh, Stalker, uh, Spellslinger, and one of the, the unannounced ones, which we're thinking is going to be the healer one. The healer We don't know, but we think. Healy one. Uh, and so I got in touch with Carbine, uh, uh, Mike Schelling over at Carbine. I said, hey, have I messed this up? Because people say I think I might have messed it up for Zam. And uh, he got back to me and said, no, that's, that's, as, it, that's as it's understood. Because if not, that would mean that the Mordesh had one extra class than the Chewer from the description they, they'd been given. And that's why I reported it as I did. So, yeah, it's one of the unannounced classes for the Mordesh, two for the Chewer. Yes. Wait, what is it? It's one? Wait, wait, wait. It's not an equal one number of, the of classes? classes. It's it not an equal, equal num- It's an equal number of classes equal. for Mordesh and Chua. Yes. Okay. Because we don't want inequality the Mordesh, here. The Mordesh have three of the already known classes and one of the unknown, whereas Chua have two of the known classes, which is Esper and Spellslinger, and the two unknown, unknown classes. Everybody follow that? Good. Or All right. I don't know. I could totally see Alchemist for Mordesh and Chua with an engineer. Looks It looks like a perfect class for the Chua. Yes. Just kind of mm-hmm. feels like that. Um, when, when, any idea when we're going to hear about the new classes? Do we have any hints on that whatsoever? Yes. Uh, Mike Donatelli said that we should expect that within about a month. So in about a month, we have games common packs. So one of those two. Uh, we know Gamescom are going to be showing off uh, Whitehaven, which is one of the areas we haven't seen yet. Uh, so if you go to Gamescom, do that. Uh, but whether we'll get to uh, we'll get one of the, the classes named there or a PAX, we're not sure. Not sure. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about Mr. Scott Hawks's interview with Jeremy Gaffney. First, I want to tell you guys about Squarespace. You guys checked out Squarespace yet? Seriously, I talk about it every week and I really, you got to go check out Squarespace. You have to check it out. If you need a website, a blog, a guild website, uh, maybe you sell a product, maybe you don't, I'm telling you, you got to check out Squarespace. Go over to squarespace.com. They've been sponsoring the show for quite a while now. We love having Squarespace on here. The best, the best way to build a new website online i'm telling you go check it out their new engine is phenomenal if you don't know anything uh about creating a website if you're not a coder don't worry about it you start off with these amazing templates all super modern look like a you know a 2013 website and they just make it so easy on the back end to change all this stuff out you know all of these kind of look like you know you got surfer ones this that and the other all you got to do is you know kind of spruce these up change the imagery and the artwork and boom you got an awesome like this would make just this this layout would make just a killer sick modern looking uh guild website so much cooler than like these janky other solutions that guilds use like i don't know why guilds refuse to like move out of like 1985 drives me nuts seriously guilds there's no reason to have a bad looking website just because you're an MMO player. Go check out Squarespace. You can do everything with Squarespace. Um, you can you can buy your domain on Squarespace. You can set up and you know get your whole site up and running uh, and all the hosting. So you do everything all. It's like a one stop shop. You get everything there. They make it super easy to like upload uh, video from YouTube, things like that, and social it all out to all the different social networks. Like all these like components are built in. It's really really a great service. Um, I want to save you guys ten percent off. Just go over, make a new account, use offer code GameBreaker7. Got to use GameBreaker7 as the offer code, save 10%. Get to making a website. I'm telling you, within, I, I started messing around with it on the new engine within like an hour. I had something that just looked awesome. 
um, just grab some images and start going and start changing stuff. And actually, for all the for some of you guys out there who know how to code, that's something else. If you do not do know how to do some HTML, you can get under the hood of this thing and really like spec it out and do like custom stuff. They have all these things that are called like open hooks where you can like add your own code in. You can add your own code in there, and sky's the limit. Uh, it's really awesome. Check it out. Squarespace.com. Use offer code GameBreaker7. Before we move on, yeah. uh, just I'm in my Dayquil adult mind and uh, getting mixed up with Five Lights or anything. I said Whitehaven, and as the marvelous, 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 marvelous boy in chat says, it's White Veil, not Whitehaven. My oh, brain, not work brain well. firing, brain misfiring. Works. It's a misfighting. Yes. All right, Scott. So the third part of Zam's interview uh, with Jeremy Gaffney came out uh, on the day of our last show because Scott sucks. And he likes... Eh. Mm. So despite that, uh, it's it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth still worth checking out in its entirety. Yes. So make sure to go and read it. There uh, is really good insight into Carbine's thought process, uh, which was really interesting. So we speculated that uh, because they're so add-on friendly we talked about that before they they might have a pre-built rating system uh for add-ons uh doesn't look like it he says i think a lot of that is best left to the free market as soon as we start saying this add-on's great use this one instead of that one danger lies that way uh and so i'd rather have that stuff in general happen through a third party a third party huh mm-hmm I party. wonder who that might be. I can think of a couple of options. I know the one that I prefer, but not that I'm biased, but I am. So Me that's neither. how it comes out. Um, yeah, Gareth, Gareth actually is asking about this from the questions that we talked about on the show the other week. Uh, it's Gareth, Gareth Gazimov Armour who uh, did that interview. And uh, he sat down and talked about the show and he said, we were asking about this. And yes, so the idea is it's going to be a real, that kind of community free-for-all really having a go at it rather than what we kind of were a little worried about was this really locked down uh, bottlenecked process that, that's going to protect the game away from the community. So yeah, it's, you could have against what we wanted, thriving community building add-ons, really going for it. And just so happens we launched a new site today <laughs> and it just so happens we have a mods and add-on section and it just so happens that they are all categorized and rated and just so happens i own wildstar.tv wildstar.tv i don't know maybe maybe how do i have that are they gonna sue me that's the big question yes, they already did it's in the are they gonna go, are they gonna go after me if i launch wildstar.tv wildstar hit me back because i have it try Try. I want to do it. I'll la I want to launch it. I'll do it. I want to do right by by the carbine team, but man, or I'll just yes. I don't know. <laughs> Cube Nation TV, the Cube World resource. More to come. Uh, what do you think? Though is this the right move? Uh, you think this is the right move from Carbine's perspective to completely just let it out in the wild and just kind of? I do fear a little bit. I fear. I fear slightly. That something like this being that they're, they're, they're so trying to integrate this, the UI, the add-ons and the mods to the game that it's hard to say. Like, I feel like the Wildstar community right now is definitely people who are much more dialed in and watching shows like this and they go to like third-party websites. The thing is, if Wildstar is just really everything that everybody thinks it's going to be and it kicks ass, it's going to have a lot more players out there to, that come in through other means. But maybe they're not so hardcore. Maybe they don't really use third-party websites. And they don't go to fan sites. I'm just wondering if it's going to sort of kind of limit how effective ads and mod on, mods and add-ons could be in the game. I don't know. I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Like if they're going to if they're going to really get behind it and even integrate it into the game, I, they're not going to integrate it in the game, I guess. But I kind of wish I kind of wish they would maybe at least get behind some sort of like general rating system to allow people to, you know, uh, the let then let the public kind of do their own thing with it. Yeah, but the where the where like, the, could you imagine uh, YouTube not like having any sort of system of just being like here, like here's everything, and then you're just sort of like shit. I, I 
They're going to be mm. yeah, but they're going to be rated on the sites that they're going to be hosted at, like say <laughs> MMO UI or something like that. They're going to we're, they're going to have those ratings there. It's not like that facility isn't going to be there as a function. So it's just again, it's placing it in the community's hands. So I don't again, think I, I I go back to wonder if the majority of the players don't go to any of these sites, and that's the, well, and, you know I. But but that's not really that big of a deal, though, I think, because I feel like, you know, like, w in, in my uh, own previous guilds that I've been into, you know, if an add-on became, like, something that would, that, that one of our players thought would be useful to another one, they would just, like, recommend it to them. they say, oh, you should check out this add-on, it'd be useful for you. And then, you know, just through word of mouth, those kinds of popular add-ons would, would, would spread. I don't think that it's something that, that um, you know, Carbine has to, like, push down everyone that's saying, oh, you definitely need to use add-ons. Because, I mean, they're definitely working on their base UI. They're going to polish it up. They're going to make it usable for the vast majority of people. But then any other add-ons, like, they're going to get out there. People are going to be using them. I don't think that it's a huge problem. And also, I mean, the, the, the team's already talked about it in, a, in actually a really cool way about they are about bringing in what they see as the most, the coolest and the best add-ons into the game as, as sort of, like, <laughs> default add-ons in the game. And how they're going to make that work? Because they want to, they want to bring them in, and also not in a way that's going to be punitive to the people that's making them. So that they're like, um, uh, it's Mike. I think it was Mike Donatelli who was talking about that, saying that, you know, we, we want, we want that to happen. We want to, to be able to utilize uh, that sort of design work from the public, but also in a way that's not basically discarding the work that's been done by the people making it. Um, although there's a lot of complexity in that. Um, legally and all sorts of stuff so uh, it's a case of they're going to have the ui you, you, you go you're the ui is going to work itself it's not going to be absolutely necessary to to have add-ons hopefully and if as farhan said you're going to go and find others just from people or the people using them plus if they're that good carbon might actually just bring them into the default ui anyway so there's a lot of options that the different stages of where people can come into things to make their sort of like day-to-day -day gaming life easy. All right, I'm going to move on. Jeremy continued with this. He said, uh, one of the interesting challenges is there's a dynamic uh, that exists among the games that have done UI modding, which is not a ton of them. It's very few. Uh, and notice what a correlation there is between games that allow UI modding and successful games. He says, uh, only three or four games have done UI modding well, I would argue. And they're all successful. There are a million games that have not done it, and many of them are unsuccessful. So it's not do UI modding, your game wins, but I do think there's a correlation or a causation. So I don't know. Would you guys agree? Would you agree with that, Scott? I think that it's a. I think it's a bonus to your game, and I think having flexibility within the UI that's going to not only make your game um, more flexible in its approach and make it playable in the way that people want to play it. Because all these add-ons, you got to remember, these aren't just like people who sit around designing. Some of them are people. Who, these are gamers who basically go, you know, what I'd really like to have while I'm doing this is this, and then they make it, and then everybody else goes, oh yeah, that would that that is great, and it and it gets more and more popular and grows and grows and grows. So you're basically having your your interaction with the game made more suitable for you. So that's that's just like a no-brainer as being a positive thing, as long as it's something that doesn't get into the nuts and bolts of the game and cause problems. And that's something they're very very specific on making sure that uh, their uh, add-on system doesn't do. And one of the things that uh, Jeremy Gaffney said before that one of the reasons why he really likes uh, having add-ons in. Uh, these MMOs is that it's actually just a, an incredible boom just for development, just because you don't have to wait for the UI team to get back to you in, in, with an update to, to, to fix something. Like, like your actual development team that's putting out a feature, like, you know, a social system team can just make their own UI. It might not be pretty or, or that, like, friendly or user-friendly or whatever, but at least they can start testing systems and getting things going a lot faster. So it, it just plays into Carbine's, you know, um, process of just iterating quickly and, and getting the different teams to just, you know, put stuff into the game as soon as possible, get feedback, and start iterating without having to get bottlenecked by like a, a single UI team. All right, finally, he says, uh, threat meters are a good example. That's a fundamental UI mechanic that the UI in most games does not show. 
Why make a fundamental system that you need to know during raiding, but there's no in-game UI for it? Now you make uh, people have to mod if they want to raid. Why did you have to do that as a developer? Like, I actually don't know. He says, uh, you either make it a compelling system and then give an interface to it yourself, or you don't make it at all. So threat meters are built into the UI basically at launch. Is that what he's saying? Is that what he's saying here? Uh, what he's saying is that they're, they're aware that it's, it, it's something that, you know, if you have a key fundamental mechanic of your gameplay, you need to be able to, like, expose that to the player. You need, it, it shouldn't be a black box kind of thing. And so they, they sort of talked about how, you know, World of Warcraft sort of had that threat problem where they didn't really know, like, a good, clean way to display it to most people. So they sort of simplified threat. They, they, they went with the one way of instead of trying to improve the interface to make it more accessible, they just made the whole gameplay, uh, like, simpler. And, and, and so what they're saying is that maybe that's not the, the, the correct approach. Maybe we need to just be a little bit more creative. We need to think of more ways to actually make threat be a more visual thing, something that's cleaner and, and more accessible to people. All right, let's uh, actually we're gonna do viewer questions. Viewer questions. Viewer. I need like a jingle right here. Do, 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 do. Viewer questions. But go check out the entire uh, that entire interview over at zam.com. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, so viewer questions, if you guys have viewer questions for the UDSP crew, you can send them to submit at gamebreaker.tv and we love video questions. Record yourself over on YouTube and shoot us the link, same email address, submit at gamebreaker.tv and we'll play it on the air. Uh, first up this week from Zachary McFarland says, do you guys think the Mordesh story is too similar to the Forsaken and WoW? Both races were members of one faction, suffered a fit of cannibalistic rage, recovered, were rejected by their former friends and then join the other faction. No. Um, I think the, the thing with the Mordesh, this is a self-inflicted wound, essentially. But it's a self-inflicted wound that um, they're turning their anger against. The, 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 it's like they've been cast out from heaven almost. Like they were... They were the elite. They were they were the greatest. They were this this wonderful faction that everybody wanted to be, and you know they thought they were it. And then they're left basically rotting in their own flesh. And the people who basically were their their school clique turned around and left them to die. And they've been cast out. And now they're they're a trying to find a way to cure themselves. That's why they're at Nexus. They're like we might be able to find a cure here, a proper cure, because they're not cured. They're just kind of dealing with it. And there's going to be parts where the outbreak breaks out, breaks out and again, and, and it's, it's an ongoing problem. So it's, it's, it is different. I can understand sort of like general themes and ideas, but it's, it's a very different concept, I think. Farron, what do you think? Uh, I think Scott put it really well. I can't really add much more to that. Yeah, I, actually, when I first read the, the thing, I, I was thinking about it, I'm like, uh, okay, I can see some of the parallels that you might draw. But yeah, Scott just convinced me that, no. Yeah. All right, last up from Mad Zon. He says, uh, how will the factions be structured? Will there be a council with a leader from each race or one big bad leader? Farha, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, <clears throat> at least on the Dominion side, we, we know that uh, they have like the Luminai, so it's sort of like this descended from the Elden, half Elden, half, I think, Cassian. Um, race that sort of uh, rules over them, and and they they do have a single leader that's their their emperor, um, that is ruling over the dominion. I don't know about on the exile side if there is because it's a little bit more ragtag sort of put together. They they have like um, really the bad with like, yes, the exile accords. So so they they do have sort of like this conglomeration where they're sort of you know working together to, to do it, but I don't think that they have like a single leader at least. Not that I know of at this point. Maybe one the, might emerge. Uh, Let's see. Let's the, the, the thing I like about the, the Dominion is the amount of skullduggery and politic. And you've got the Luminar, you're basically the, 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 the blood descendants. And you've got, the, they're like, you know, the chosen people. Then you've got the Makari who have been doing things for the Eldam forever. And are basically the puppeteers behind the scenes doing all the spy stuff. you got the general Cassians, you just think they're it. And then, you know, you got the Draken who are running around and just give us something to kill. And they're following, they're, they're following the uh, Luminai because of a fight, basically. And then you got the Tewer just blowing everything. 
Scott Ox. Follow him on Twitter at Jaramore, J-A-R-I-M-O-R. And, of course, go over to Zam.com and check out all the amazing stuff they are posting up over there on a daily, daily basis. Uh, Mr. Farhan Siddiqui, you can follow him on Twitter at Unindale, U-N-I-N-D-E-L. Hit him up on the Twitter and right here on the show. Don't forget, gang, uh, showtime change. Mondays at 3, the show is moving to 3 PST on the live show. So we'll see you next week for the live show. Uh, go to CubeNation.com if you guys are a fan of the new uh, game Cube World. Still in alpha. We just launched CubeNation.tv. Go check it out. Let us know what you think. And tweet me what you think on the new site. You can tweet me at Gary Gannon, G-A-R-Y-G-A-N-N-O-N. So hit me up on the Twitter. Let me know what you think of the site. It's CubeNation.tv. Don't forget to time change. And we'll see you next week for more UDSP. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks. You guys are awesome. Bye.